you're wasting all the time Another hour gone, did you hear the chime? You're wasting all the time Recorded for Thursday, August 13th, 2020, yeah well, hello! Hey! Woo! And welcome to Wasting All the Time, Season 2. My name is John, and uh, joining me today, uh, as as ever, are my two co-hosts uh, in the blue t-shirt right over here. It's Cody! And in the green t-shirt over here. It's your boy, Dave. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> um, I am wearing a red t-shirt because this is a red episode this is all lies i have no idea what color t-shirts they're wearing um and i'm not wearing a red t-shirt but that's the fun of this podcast it is an improv Ooh. comedy podcast which means we're making it all up on the spot as we go and that means constant lying Yay! and so um you know that's uh that's something that we really feel strongly about and um, and that uh, we want to continue perpetuating as this goes on. Um, so this show is separated into um, things that we like to call segments. Mm. Um, mm. Grapefruit. Yes. Uh, mm, mm-hmm. Yes. Grapefruit also has segments. Uh, certain <laughs> insects have segments. Ooh. Um, yes. And. Uh, like an insect or a grapefruit, <clears throat> this podcast also has segments, of which wow. this is the first. And now it's time for John to break shit down. Now entering the John Along. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, screwdrivers, and then we can all uh, go back to what we were doing. Um, so now this is uh, actually um, in reference to the tool, not to the beverage. Uh, I believe I've referred to the beverage in the past in one of these, or maybe some other thing. But the tool is very important because it provides you with leverage. And as a very famous Greek guy whose name I can't remember right now once said, with a big enough lever, you can move the world. And so that's why screwdrivers are important. You need that leverage to be able to move the world, um, which is flat, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Um, you know, if you, uh, you, so you get a nice, like, um, flathead screwdriver, tuck it under the edge of the world, and just <laughs> give it a little flip. <laughs> Um, and that's how you make it be winter. Yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 an incredible feat of engineering. Um, it takes you know every year this happens. Um, the um, you know the you know Noah uh, who is in charge of this um, coordinates thousands of screwdriver wielders throughout the world <laughs> to stand along the edge of the earth and just simultaneously flip up their uh their screwdrivers so that the season can change the crops can grow and um you know life can continue as normal on this weird saucer shaped thing we call the earth <laughs> yes <laughs> god damn it life <laughs> finds a way <laughs> it uh totally does <laughs> So anyway, that's just something that I've been feeling really strongly about lately. That's good. good. Thank and, you. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, um, so that's that. Um, that was, of course, uh, completely made up in my brain, uh, just like <laughs> the next segment will be. <laughs> Only in the next segment, it will be made up in all of our brains. <gasps> Theater of the mind. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's time for Fruit Word. Upwards, downwards, forwards, backwards, I say we go Fruit Words. So now it's time to play Fruit Words. Fruit <laughs> Words is a game we play utilizing cards of two kinds and colors. Red cards are nouns and green cards are adjectives. Uh, we will draw one card of each color and improvise a scene inspired by those words. And uh, we, uh, of course, no longer draw physical cards. Like plebs. Yes, we instead use the super awesome um fruit words app developed by uh one of our 
glorious patrons, unexampled salt. Which is available um, for free in the Android store. Yes, it mm. is. Okay, and so our fruit words pick today is going to be lyrical atom. Yes. <laughs> it's time for science music. Wait, hold on. Science, Dave. <laughs> this time, oh, wait. <laughs> lyrical atom. I, I guess I um I need to be educated on on your style uh more than anything. I mean, the concert was a bit awkward for those of us not in the know. Maybe you could tell us a little something about how you wrote the music and what exactly was going on during the performance, because I was a little bit lost. And I'd like to oh, be well, educated. The, right. Well, it's uh, it's all based on uh, the periodic table of elements, you know, the, the various atoms that make up uh, the universe as we know it. OK. Um, yes. And so, um, you know, as we move through the songs, um, we're really, uh, you know, we're we're building the universe out of these elements, out of these atoms. Okay. Um, I guess, I mean, there's, there's definitely a, a history behind that kind of thing, taking some arbitrary data and assigning values to it, musical values. But that's not really, I don't think that's what you did. I mean, like I can imagine like you take the core elements and like assign a note uh, you know, a pitch and a value, you know, something like that. But, and then you'd play it on instruments, but I, I kind of just felt like we were just all sitting in quiet and there were no instruments that I could see. Right. And then occasionally I would just say the name. <laughs> I, uh, and yeah, you weren't mic'd. Wait. So. Okay. Of <laughs> an atom. You know, like like that bit in the middle, you know? Palladium. 106.42. You know, that center point of the table. You know, that's that's like the thesis statement of the work. So of the whole album, really. So holy crap. Are you Alan Markleberg? I am, you, yes. You, oh, your atomic musical, uh, it, it, it was transformational. It blew my mind. It, it, it made me what? reevaluate the way I see the world. I, oh, thank you so much. Oh, have you seen it? Have you seen it, Guy? Have you seen this musical? I was just here. I, oh, I, I witnessed it, a, it. I don't know if yeah. I saw it. Oh, I don't man. know if I can say that. but See, Fred, oh. this guy got oh. the strontium. I did. He understood oh, it. Oh, see, he says it. It gives me shivers. Oh. Anyway, uh, I just, I, I just saw you. And I'm, re I'm really sorry. I don't know. I don't normally do this. I'm not normally that guy. I just, I just, I no, really wanted to it's, it's let you know. It's just fine. It's oh. just fine. Oh, yeah. It really, really, it just spoke to me. Okay. Anyway, anyway, it did? I'm gonna. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Especially. Oh. How many no, times no, did you have to hear it before you got it? Oh, the, the first time. It was like it was like magic. It was transcendental art. It was like, yeah, there's this whole this whole Wagner guy and he's okay and, and all, you know, this other Fettuccini or whatever his name is, those guys are fantastic. But this this is true art. This is what the soul yearns for. Uh, you must have been sitting closer to him. I I could barely hear anything. Oh, you heard him? You actually heard what? his voice? You Oh my god. Oh. I'm jealous. Wow. Can I I wow. Hi jealous. I'm confused. Yes, the um <sighs> Yes, the the I I hold a microphone during the performance, <laughs> but it is not actually connected to anything. So those farther out in the audience um do not experience oh, the uh the the aural aspect of it. Uh it just hangs in the air can i make one recommendation just maybe to broaden like a noble gas wow i just, just to that's broaden the appeal maybe a little bit ah, that's ballsy. maybe that's cool. when you use just that tell same how to paint the ceiling yeah 
Hmm? Do you, I'm sorry. Are you talking about paint interior decorating? Well, yeah, I was. I was. Uh, I was just saying. It's kind of funny. You're going to give a recommendation to fucking Alan Markleberg about how to do his shows. I was like, oh, why don't you just tell Michelangelo how to paint the the 16th chapel, or you know, I don't tell Leonardo how to carve the other turtles out of marble. It's just kind of you know, you know, well, he's. I'm sure that at some point people did, and they probably improved these great artists. So I'm not saying that's necessarily what's about to happen now, but you never know. It could be. I just think that it would be great if I could hear you during the performance. So when you use that same microphone to give your introduction, don't turn it off. Don't turn it off and talk oh. into a dead mic. Leave the mic on so we can oh. all hear the names of the atoms. This guy's a genius. You don't already know the names of the atoms? Not all 118 or whatever. Oh, that's that's so transcendental, man. If the microphone's on, then you're using atoms to talk about atoms. That's a good point, actually. Wow. Man, I'm sorry I got so uppity with you. That's brilliant. All right, so you're getting tattooed on the other butt cheek. Ow! Ding! <laughs> that was, uh... Very strange. That was one of the weirder side characters I played. I'm sorry, he was kind of a straight man, and then I took him a little bit off the rails. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> nice Ninja Turtle reference. Thank you. Yes, I enjoyed that. All right. Okay. Well, let's move it right along to the, uh, the next bit of our worm here. Uh, what have you been up to? What have you been up to? To what up have you been? Dave! Yes? What have you been up to? Well, I'll tell you what. I finally pulled the trigger and ordered myself a new desk for my home office. Ooh, nice! Yeah, I, uh, I'm pretty pleased with the picture, and I'm hoping that it shows up undamaged and uh, is put together undamaged and, uh, <laughs> and serves me well. But it's, uh, it's what I've been looking for. I've been intending on doing this for over a year. Then all of a sudden there it was, and I was like, all right, here it is, and it's budget-friendly, and I like the look of it, and it has the features that I want, which is well, virtually no features. <laughs> <laughs> features is solid piece of material. The end. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent. Yeah, and in particular, I wanted a wide piece of material. Uh -huh. So I got a 72-inch desk side oh, to wow. side. And it's uh, between two and three feet deep. So it's not super deep. But yeah, so it's like the keyboard is too low and the, mu you know, oh, the musical wrists. keyboard is too high. And I thought... I just want them side by side. So I got a six foot wide desk and I'll be able to set it up with the music keyboard on one side and the mouse and keyboard on the other and monitors in front of everything. And uh, no, no drawers. No drawers. Mm. And if I end up needing drawers, I can always add that to the collection later. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. And, you know, it can just zoom side to side depending on what i'm working on on the computer and so i bought a new office chair as well Ooh, with fancy. wheels on it and i bought mm. a floor mat for carpet so Ooh. that i can actually roll side to side without gouging <laughs> deep crevasses <laughs> into the piling of the carpet mm -hmm. um, always a plus and breaking the you know cheap plastic casters because <laughs> i refuse to spend that much for a chair damn it yeah. Um, yeah, at a certain point. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm I'm pretty excited about that. It, I, you know, it's not none of it's here yet at time of recording, but at the time of this episode airing, at least some of it should be here. Yeah. Anyway, that was a lot of talk about not exciting things, but I'm very <laughs> excited about it. And mm. uh, guys, it has built-in like grommets in the surface, so I can feed cables through. Oh, rad! And, <laughs> and the desk has a, a back panel that uh -huh. also has cable trays in it. So I'm... Okay. And the friggin' legs have access ports. So I, I can stick... Uh, what are they called? Extension cord... Um, 
Power strip? Mul- power strip. Yeah, the multi burst plug <laughs> power strip. <laughs> Sorry. I could stick one of those in the cable tray Ooh. and then feed the cord out through the leg of the thing. And so it's not, you know, down on the ground with the, you know, a waterfall of, of cords and cables. <sighs> That's high quality it. cable management. So I, I'm really excited about that. Mm hmm. And I'm also looking at upgrading my computer, but we'll see. I, I, I don't have that much money. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Computers do that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's what's up with me. Very cool. Cody. Yeah. What have you been up to? I just got another audiobook gig, so that's super exciting. Oh, awesome. Working on that with an, uh, an author I've worked with before, Peter Nealon. Guys. Fantastic, super cool guy, writes hard military fiction, so those are an absolute blast. Uh, It Mm. talks about guns and tactics and military equipment and hardware, and it is, (laughs) it's it's like a kid in a candy store, like, I'm not even, like, doing an (laughs) audiobook, I'm reading the story about how this guy backflips off a roof and then throws grenades and then shoots two guys, it's so great, it's so much fun. Nice. Um, That's been my big one, I, like, as of, like, Two days ago, when I was kind of drunk, I was like, you know what? I want to get into 3D level design. So, <laughs> because, why the fuck not at this point? I uh, had a friend when I was streaming who um, worked on the visual effects for a game I was streaming at the time. And he jumped in the stream and he was super cool. Um, and so we got to talking about it and he's like, yeah, here's all these free resources and all this cool stuff. And I, I got into it a little bit and then drifted out. And I was like, oh, this is cool. It's going to take a lot of work. So in classic Cody style, I did not do it. Uh-huh. <laughs> and but I just I saw something again that was like um, oh yeah they were doing like some it's called a game jam where they're like yeah you have 48 hours or 24 hours or 72 hours or a week or whatever to make a game with this theme and like these restrictions and it's, and it's a ton of fun and it's it's super cool and it's kind of that going like damn like that just that looks like a lot of fun and I like stuff like that it seems like so much fun and I it just kind of reignited that little spark of man I could I could do 3D level design, like lighting and cinematography and things. Like I have, yes, I have that knowledge of those things, and and learning these 3D engines would be a ton of fun. So that is the uh, the new hotness until it bores me, and then I do something else. <laughs> eh, yeah, I'm familiar with that routine, uh, having done it yeah. myself. <laughs> I live there, but you know, it, it'll it'll distract me for a while, and then maybe I'll pick something else up and. Mm-hmm. Go from there. And when I finish this audiobook, I'm going to uh, look into making myself a demo reel for actually auditioning for voice parts because I want to be in like video games and cartoons and animated shit. And it sounds like a ton of fun. So I'm going to work nice. on that. That's what's happening with me. Very cool. Awesome. John, what about you, John, buddy? Tell us. Uh, well, um, I uh, have officially come to the end of my first semester back at school Woo! Yay! Um, my uh, computer science class is done Yay! Um, and uh i am in the uh, the final week of my health class Yay! and my health class there's really not a lot left to do so i'm basically done with that too Yay! Um, so now you yeah. can computer and health yes you can, can. check the computer's yeah. health mm-hmm Yeah, and finishing this computer class uh, is significant because that makes me eligible to start applying for um, IT jobs with the state. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I now have the uh, the six units required uh, for the uh, information technology technician. Um, And, you know, combining that with uh, my work experience uh, doing... uh, website stuff as a student assistant back with Department of Education. Oh, yeah. I uh, technically fulfill the minimum qualifications for IT associate as well. Hey. The next step up. So That's awesome, that dude. A- Fucking congrats. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, I'm going to really try and uh, make that shift because I think I'll be uh, I think I'll have a lot more fun doing that stuff. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't hate what I do now and I don't think I would hate being an analyst. But I just every time I look at computer science and and IT, it just I don't know something about it seems like a lot more fun for me. You awesome, want dude. this? 
the red fish. Yep. Next step is, uh, yeah, getting on those uh, eligibility lists and uh, starting to apply for jobs. Yeah. So get some traction there. <laughs> take a test to take a test to be on a list to allow someone to ask them if you can work for them. Yes. Ah, uh, the state. <laughs> <laughs> it's a system. It works. Mm. It's sort of. It has worked. Yeah. And, it, uh, it technically functions to a certain point. Mm -hmm. We so. have in the past, at various times, started with people <laughs> not being hired and ended <laughs> in a state of people being hired. <laughs> now that's, no that's one kind knows of a, how. <laughs> that's a post hoc ergo proctor hoc thing, but still, 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 it's fine. <laughs> that's Proctor? Right, proctor? Steve. Shit. Yeah. Is that the name of your new children's book, Cody? The name of my what? New children's book, Propter Proctor Shit. <laughs> oh, God. Yep. Nailed it. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I've been up to. Nice. Glad to hear it, John. Congrats. <laughs> yes. That's, uh, awesome, dude. You. Definitely something to be lauded. Yeah. That's all. Well done. Thank you. So why don't we uh, move it right along uh, to our next segment, What's Weird in the <gasps> World? What's Weird? have been banned for bad behavior a hotel in australia's outback says oh no <laughs> emus get out <laughs> two emus <laughs> siblings kevin and carol God are now it. banned from a hotel in a tiny town in australia's vast outback raised by an anu animal rescuer the birds are usually a friendly and wide-eyed source of entertainment but then the emus learn to climb the stairs <laughs> <laughs> The new skill gave the birds access to the pub of the Yoraka Hotel in Queensland. Once inside, they unleashed a long-legged brand of chaos. They snatched <laughs> toast and french fries away from customers. One of the birds even went behind the bar. A stern response was required. A stern. Emus have been banned from this establishment for bad behavior. A sign now says at the stairs leading to the hotel's pub. Good sounding the sign. message asks any mm -hmm. human visitors to replace the emu barrier when they enter. <sighs> We put the sign up, but they're, we're not quite sure whether they're able to read it or not. <laughs> Hotel co-owner no. uh, Jerry Gimblet said in an interview with 10 News First Jerry. in Queensland. So we've had to put a bar across there as well. God, that's not even close to an Australian accent. <laughs> Keep it pretty up. close. Keep it up. The emus have been popular with visitors. They've learned that posing for a photo often means a reward of a quick snack, says Gimblet, who owns the hotel with her husband, Chris. Chris. The interesting thing is when people are making toast in the annex, mm. a head comes across, takes the toast, and gobbles it up as it pops, <laughs> Gimblet said, told the Brisbane Times. Brisbane! Brisbane! Uh oh, shit. I'm. It, Sorry. It is not safe to get between an emu and food. They have a sharp, strong beak, and their long neck can suck up food like an high powered vacuum cleaner, <laughs> Chris Gimblet says in an email to NPR. <laughs> Another concern. If the emus are startled, the large birds would likely run fast. When frightened, the animals have a tendency, Chris Gimblet says, to do a forward sprint whilst looking behind them at the source of their fright and heaven help people and objects that happen to be in their blind forward run. Despite the birds' transgressions, Gimblet said he, she's glad Kevin and Carol have stuck around, two survivors of a nest full of eggs that was found abandoned. All their brothers and sisters have since moved on. The pair have endeared themselves to the locals and visitors alike. Until recently, Gimblet said, the emus had been kept at bay by cordons that were erected around the back of the hotel. Then the birds worked out how to use the stairs leading up to the pub's patio. We didn't think they could climb stairs, <laughs> said Leanne Byrne, a Yoraka resident who raised Kevin and Carol in an interview with the ABC. The animals made several cameos in that segment, <clears throat> lunging in front of the camera to get, grab pieces of bread. Now, Gimblet said, she's hoping the birds won't figure out how to maneuver limbo style under the rope and up the stairs. Crowding isn't normally a problem in the pub. After all, Yuraka has a population of fewer than 20 people. But as <laughs> is often the case with wild animals, there are other issues, literally. If they had control of their bowels... The emus would be welcome inside, oh, Gimblet no. told the ABC. Oh no. They're a tad incontinent, 
Byrne agreed. Even with the chance of foul behavior, Yuraka's emus are generating interest online from people who said they want to visit the Outback Town. Many also said they're thankful for a bit of avian comic relief. <laughs> the country is needing, with, needing this with our COVID crises, a visitor to the hotel's Facebook page wrote. The ABC journalist could not stop laughing, and nor could I. And there you have it. Wow. <laughs> All right, Mr. Gimlet. Uh, we've uh, been very, very interested in hearing your account of the events that happened this past weekend. And uh, so I'm here from the Natural History Museum and my colleagues here as well for note taking. And uh, maybe you could describe to us what the beast looked like as it came into your place of business. Well, the first thing I noticed was he was um, he was smoking, wearing sunglasses. Smoking, eh? Wow. Smoking a cigarette and wearing sunglasses, which is not a thing you usually see a koala do. No, it's not typical. No, so you're pretty you're pretty certain it's a koala, then, eh? Pretty certain, yeah. Just I mean, he's got the uh, the fuzzy fur, little ears. But it's been fear, a dingo. Check. That's right. I mean, Dingoes also got fuzzy fur. Yeah. True. But dingoes don't got those little teddy bear, bear ears. No, know? they're more like triangles, aren't they? Probably. True, yeah. These are definitely little round teddy bear ears. All right. Just a bit off brand, eh? What with the cigarette smoking and all? <laughs> that, that's what's weird. Like, at first, he was just like kind of wandering in the pub, you know. Maybe take some pictures with the uh, the clientele, it, it, like cute little koala bear. Um, you know, gets a little snack, take a picture. Um, goes on his way. But now, he start coming in, sitting at the bar, smoking with sunglasses on. Mm. And I swear he's trying to order a pint. Oh, a very pint strange. What? what do they like? We haven't been able to tell yet. I mean, so far we've just been giving it lemonade, but it seems angry about that. <laughs> I did see one uh, one statement you made where it said he came across a, a bowl of nuts and he sucked them up like a real hoover. That's true, he did do that. Don't want to write that down. Hoover. Yeah. It's been very distressing to the other patrons. Mm. And tell us, what did he do when he came across a bit of toast? Well, he... Um... He ate it. <laughs> How? Crikey. By, uh, he grabbed it out of a patron's hand. No. And, uh, and ate it. No. <laughs> yeah. Tremendous. I mean, it's, it's not that weird. You know, he's a wild animal. He grabs for food. Yeah, but he wants to be a regular. I think he'd be polite like. Yeah, true. Are most of your clientele in this tiny town? Polite, like. <laughs> I mean, most, you know, we all uh, know each other pretty well. It's a small town. Yeah. Wow. Well, definitely keep us abreast of the situation. And if you ever find out whether he's a lager or a, 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 an ale <laughs> drinker. Good one, boss. Uh, yeah, something I was reaching for, couldn't find it. That's I'm all drunk. right. I believe in you. Yeah. Yep. 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 End of end of my thought. Really. <laughs> end of your thought there. Ah. All sh all finished. All right. Well, um, if you've got no more questions, um, I really do have to uh, look over this job application that it turned into this morning. <laughs> Ooh. Did she wash? Uh, assistant manager. Might be worth it. Ballsy. Well. Let me know as I head back to the Australian Museum of Science and Creatures. Huh. Ah, keep me up to date. I am an official. Will do. Good day. Oh, yeah. Good day. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> Good day, Carver. Sorry, I meant to ding uh, right after the assistant manager bit. Ah, that's <laughs> right. Gets away from you. Yeah. I was there for that scene. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, super weird. Oh, yeah. I, I enjoyed uh, a lot of the descriptions in that article about, like, what happened and uh, 
yeah how things w- went down and what things looked like and that's mm-hmm. kind of what i was trying to uh, okay uh, work yeah with. sorry i as soon as dave said we're talking to the bar owner and he said my assistant i was like fuck i have to do an australian accent i can't just <laughs> be the guy that's like a tourist nope clearly i'm either the assistant or the bar owner and john just did all the bar owner so i'm the assistant yep well fun stuff anyway i yeah. enjoyed it yeah that was a, oh. I think we were equidistant away from an actual accent. <laughs> yeah, I I wasn't even trying. Uh, <laughs> I was trying uh, enough that when I failed, it would be worth listening to. There you go. Well done. Thank you. Ah, so with that out of the way, there is but one more thing, one more uh, piece of this grapefruit to devour. Yes. Ooh. Oh, man. That is the improv game <gasps> of the week. Oh, yeah. It's the improv game of the week. Well, every week on the podcast, we choose an improv game and then try to play it. <laughs> and this week's improv game is. Evil stick of gum. Whoa. <laughs> ah, yeah, yes. In this game, one character has a piece of gum in his mouth, and this piece of gum is capable of talking. The point is that other characters in the scene do not know about this piece of gum, and hence mistake the gum's words for the characters. Since our piece of gum is evil, mm-hmm. it tries to get its owner in trouble. Classic. Classic. Uh, license and registration, please. Oh. Oh yeah, that's right. No, shoot, sorry. I'm 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 just in a hurry. I mean not I'm not, I'm not in like that much of a hurry. I'm in a safe uh-huh. hurry. I'm in a I'm in a very legal hurry. Uh-huh. Anyway, anyway, yeah, let me grab the uh let me grab there my glove. I'm gonna reach from reach glove box. Here we go. All right. Uh-huh. Got this. Okay. No, my 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 registration's definitely <laughs> it's definitely in here. It's definitely in here. It's uh-huh. it's, it's it's probably okay. inside the manual. That's where I keep it normally. Yeah. You're, you're That's okay. I'm so high right now. I, I couldn't read it anyway. Uh, I mean, I'm uh, standing up out here, and my angle of vision is so high relative to yours seated in the vehicle that I couldn't uh, read it, in this, certainly not in this lighting. Oh. Um. Okay. Anyway, I, I, did, I did find it. Do you want me to, like, hold it up? Really high. Uh, hand it over here, please. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Because like you, know, you, you are uh, a couple months overdue on your registration. I noticed your stickers weren't up to date. Oh no, a couple? Really? I thought it was just the one. I mean, I thought I was already taken care of. That's what I was. I'm pretty sure it's it's in the mail. I definitely I definitely filled out the form and mailed it in. So that it's 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 in the mail. <laughs> DMV, government employees, am I right? Taking their... I'll tell you what, uh, do you have any weed? No, 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 um, mm, mm, mm. What? Uh, I'm sorry, um, do you have anything we'd be interested in seeing <laughs> as law officers, uh, <laughs> regarding this supposed mail transaction? Um, do you have a, a receipt or a proof of that mailing oh um yeah it's 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 on my it's on my phone does that count uh, i can bring it up I, i've got no, like a, i think you better you better leave your phone where it is okay okay but if it's on this, my okay this license uh, uh uh-huh. is also expired sir no uh, hmm okay oh man that's that must be my. That must be the old one. That that's probably the old license that I had. This uh, is an older license, yes. Yeah, because I got a new one. It's yeah. Seriously, seriously, if you could just like sell me some weed <laughs> right now, uh, I'll let you go. I mean, I I'm just really jonesing, and you just look like the type. I I mean I, well, I didn't hear anything. Did you? Uh, wink. No, man. Wink. I certainly don't have anything I am in, um, in the trunk, wink. This doesn't count as entrapment. Oh sweet. This uh, uh, uh remember remember back in the nineties trapper keepers? 
<laughs> um, always wanted one of those. Oh, you, okay. Random nostalgia. Sorry. Uh, I'll keep it keep it professional and business like here. Uh, I, I that's good. Yeah, you know, you want you want some of the nostalgia. I'm I a gotcha. person too. You know, I'm 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 just like that dare bullshit. Just like that dare capital no das uh shit uh <laughs> hey you're not allowed to speak German you're you're Sorry. a cop it's against the law I'm having speech issues at the moment uh it's probably just interference from the radio <laughs> okay what about what about cocaine what that's what bad a- isn't it <laughs> I'm very. S- I'm very sleepy and I need a bump. Um, um, are you is your is your superior officer gonna be okay with this? Um, you could get in a lot of trouble if you're looking for a little North Pole honey. You no, know what I'm saying? It's it's a it's a bumpy ride, but it gets you there in style. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I oh. I couldn't resist. It's good. No, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> Boy, that was tough. There was there was a yeah. lot of stuff that was like there is fucking no justifying this. <laughs> yeah, I, like what, my favorite was was like, what about cocaine? That's bad, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh! Nothing like evil stick of gum to get your blood flowing right oh yeah put you on the spot Mm -hmm. yeah i enjoyed that that was fun that was great that was fun yeah thanks guys yeah i liked i liked the uh the way that the um the status shifted between the characters like it really did begin with cody being you know kind of nervous and lower status Mm -hmm. and dave being totally in control and then that heard <laughs> yeah. over the course of it. it was really fun yeah that was good i liked that yeah. that was slick well that's about all the uh time we have for wasting today thanks so much for joining us uh, if there was anything about this episode that you liked in particular you can uh, tell us about it at uh wasting all the time.com slash vote uh you can nominate a favorite scene Ooh. and uh, at the end of the year we will uh hold a vote and determine the top 10 scenes of the year and produce a special where we count those down. Uh, it's a lot of fun every year. We really enjoy it. And if there was anything uh, that you really disliked about this episode, anything that made you say, you know what? I feel like <laughs> um, after listening to that, I need to go uh, to my le- local um, elections board and, um, and uh, you know, and start climbing the political rungs to the point of, um, you know, at least U.S. representative, if not, you know, senator or president, uh, so that I can end this podcast and the lives of those who produce <laughs> it. You can go ahead and tweet that to me, at Jay Hansen himself. Uh, that is my personal Twitter account, and I never check. Ooh. Huh. And so, yes, uh, all of that being said... I have been John. Oh, 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 I have been Cody. And I've been Dave. And we wasted all the time. Wow. Yeah, we sure did. did. Woo. Bon voyage. Cuts. <laughs> Congratulations. You've made it to the end of another episode of Wasting All the Time, a podcast. If you enjoyed this show, then please consider subscribing on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or follow us on Spotify. If you really enjoyed the show, then head on over to patreon.com slash timewastepod and become a supporter of our time-wasting efforts. Now, that was a lot of things I just threw at you, so if you forget all that, just head on over to wastingallthetime.com, and there we have all the answers.
Is there an is there an Apple version yet? There will not be an Apple version. Okay. Fuck them. Get a good phone. No, actually, Apple phones are fine. Support a better company. Actually, I don't know about that. Be more like me. There we go. No, I think there's going to be a website. <laughs> Ooh. What? Come on, it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, sorry for the troubles. No worries. Why are you apologizing for that? That was like 20 years ago, 30 years ago. <laughs> the troubles? In Ireland. Oh, god damn it. I knew that was a reference that I didn't get. Like a chump. Yeah, I think it's I think it's more than 20 or 30 years. I think it's it was in, more like wasn't the troubles isn't it the didn't s- it like come to a head in the nineties? Oh, I thought the seventies. Oh, okay. Wow. I don't know. I know nothing. I know less than you, so we're probably both wrong. But Stephen Langston will definitely let us know. Man's a genius. He is our Jupiter Jones, our Encyclopedia Brown. Oh, 1960s through 1998. So. So we were both right. (laughs) In a way. In a way. In a way where both Dave and John are right. And the dairy is too much. Ah, So anyway, ah, that's what I've been up to. (laughs) Nice.